shop. Today we're going to talk about a couple things here real quick and then we're going to get into a project. Now if you're a follower of the channel, you've already heard us talk about the Bar Z Summer Bash and what a great time we had this year out in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Now Stan Zinkowski is the host and he puts on a heck of a party. Stan manufactures something called the Z Squares. While I was out there, I was looking in Stan's shop and I was admiring a set of his squares and I said, Stan, someday when my ship comes in, I'm going to buy a set of those squares from you. And he said, well, Jim, i got to be honest with you, you better hurry up. I've just been awarded several U.S. patents on that and I may sell the patent rights and somebody else will take over the manufacturing. I said, Stan, when that happens, let me know because I'd like to buy a set of squares from you, the ones that you've made because I know they are the utmost and highest quality. And he said, okay, fast forward about a month and a half and look what shows up in the mail. Compliments of my friend Stan Zinkowski. Stan, thank you so much. This is a gift that I will treasure for the rest of my life and will pass on to my children. Now Stan even makes the cases for these. He's got his uh, Bar Z logo in it. These squares are absolutely beautiful. They're handmade, hand ground and hardened squares. This one is a 3060. And then you see there's an edge right here. And so what that allows is you know, never have to worry when you line up if you're, if you're actually on the edge, you pull it over and this will always give you a true 90 degree edge right here on this side and on again on this side. And it's, the squares are opposites, but they're a match set. They're absolutely beautiful. He grinds every one of them. And if I was a betting man, if Tom Lipton was here and wanted the challenge, I would almost be willing to bet you that this square is within a tenth of a thousandth or less of being exactly perfect. Included in this set is a set of small 4590s and a set of large 4590s and one medium sized set of 3060s. Now Stan also, when he made the case, left a place for me to put my scribe. And this scribe was made for me by Randy Richards and uh, Randy made a lot of the YouTube creators these. He made me one. It's a beautifully made, handmade scribe. It comes apart. Goes together like this. It's got a carbide scribe in it for doing all my layout. So now I have a place to keep Randy's scribe right next to Stan Squares. Now the reason I talk to you about this is because we're gonna use this for the project today. Now today's project in the shop is one of those hay man projects from a buddy of mine. He's embarked on the world of jeeping. I did that back in my younger days when I decided that I wanted to cross across the swamp and a four wheel drive vehicle and learned that that gets very, very expensive. And so he is learning that lesson as well. But as a good friend, I'm helping him out today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build a part for him. And this part's called a drag link. Let me explain to you what a drag link does on a Jeep. If these are the front tires on a Jeep, here's the front axle. We'll throw a little grill action in there for you. Pull the headlights. This Jeep has to be able to turn the wheels. The way Jeep does it, they put a steering box right there on the edge of the frame, they run a shaft up, and there's a steering wheel up behind the front seat. At the bottom of this shaft, there's something called a pitman arm. The pitman arm, as you turn the steering wheel, moves back and forth. The way it transfers power to the front wheels is through a drag link. That drag link will connect here, and it'll come all the way over and connect to the steering wheel. This steering wheel then connects back to this steering wheel with a tie rod. Now, like most guys have learned, when you put bigger tires on it, you need bigger parts. As they increase tire size on a vehicle, it increases the pressure on the drive line of the vehicle and of all the steering components. That's where I come in. He needs a bigger drag link because obviously he broke something. This is a piece of inch and a quarter chromoly tubing. It's heavy wall, uh, inch and a quarter wide. And he gave me these two threaded bones. Now the interesting thing about these threaded bungs is one is a right hand thread, one is a left hand thread. These are going to go in each end. What he's asked me to do is to drive these in, weld them in place. This will be his new drag link. He has already cut it to length. In the end of this, in each side, they thread in something called a hind joint. They make many different versions of them, but essentially it is a very tight tolerance ball, which allows the steering to move in all different angles as the suspension on the vehicle moves, but maintain a very tight control of all the steering components. So we have a left hand thread and a right hand thread. That allows you to be able to turn the shaft and either lengthen the shaft out or draw the shaft in. Therein lies the problem. If I weld these in place, how do you grab that? A pair of channel locks, vice grips, or God forbid the old pipe wrench trick? I mean, if you're building a nice vehicle, why not take the extra time to do it right and machine in some kind of way to hold this? So what I thought I'd do 
He's machined a couple of flats on the end here so we can get a 15 16 wrench on like this and allow him to be able to hold this or turn it because we're gonna, he'll also have to thread in the Heimkoons. Now, what I don't know, it looks to me like this has been cut on a chop saw. He says it's nice and square. What I wanna do is chuck it up in the lathe and true both ends of this to make sure they are truly square. And we're only talking about taking, you know, probably less than 10 thousandths off the end of them. Then while I've got it in the lathe, I'm gonna cut a chamfer on this side and a chamfer on this side. That'll allow me to get down in there and make a nice deep penetrating weld. All right, so here's where we're at. Basically, I'm set to zero, zero here. So I'm flush with the front of this spacer and I'm flush this way, in or out. And if you come up to the DRO, you'll see the DRO is zeroed. That one will, that one will bump a little bit here just as I, as I touch the table uh, back to zero, but that's where we're at. So we're gonna make a pass first a light cut and then we'll go in and do a finish cut to make this happen. This will be our first cut so where we are rotationally uh, does not make any difference. Okay now we're gonna move we're gonna move the part this way to our final dimension which we're gonna be taking a uh, point 0850 off. But there's 0 0.0850. We're going to go that way, ironically. 0 0.850. Put a little honeymoon lube on it. Sorry it's so noisy, but that's the rotophase running. of the taper that's in it when we got back here we were taking a lot of material I probably should have stepped it off one more time to keep all the noise out of it or help keep the noise out of it all right so this is stand square and this is where stand square is going to come in for us on this project so we'll check and what this will do is this will ensure that when we make this cut the cuts are parallel and they don't tape. Okay, here we go. We're, we've touched off on both corners there. We're all zeroed out. I'm gonna make a light cut to try to take a little bit off this taper back here so I don't wind up taking so much off. And then we'll make our finished cut. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. We got two flats welded on each side here. If you take the wrench, the wrench fits on there perfect, a 15 16 wrench. Just enough play that even with a little scunge on there, it fits just nice and tight. The next step is gonna be to put these in here. We got the chamfer in there. What I did off camera is I just took a file over here and I just broke the corners. Also off camera, I complained about the threads being uh, real bad with a burr on it. And I didn't film, but I took a chamfering tool and I chamfered this just real nicely. And then I relieved this with just a mill file just to get the edges nice and smooth. We've got the chamfer in there that we put on when we had it on the lathe. So the next step and the final step for me is gonna to be to bring the TIG welder over here, light up on it, and let's get a nice weld laid in. Well, it's time to get down to the meat of it and get a little TIG welding done. We're gonna lay a bead all the way around both ends. Got a nice chamfer, nice deep V. Our filler metal that we're gonna use is ER70S-6. We're gonna be running in uh, DC electrode negative. We only TIG weld in DC electrode negative. Machine set on about 150 amps. We're gonna get down in there and lay a nice bead about a third of the way around, rotate it a third of the way around, and a third of the way around. Before I actually start laying bead down, 
I'm going to put a couple of tack welds on both ends. So it's getting late. I'm ready to go in. Let's get to this and get it done. Got a little bump right there. I'll take it over to the grinder and relieve that out of there. All right, well, I'm happy with it. I like it. Strong as an ox. It might have some multiple uses besides a uh, drag link for a Jeep. We'll mark this as one more done for the shop, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.